Well, you start stealing from your neighbors, the, the weak, the strong take steal from the weak until the neighbors don't have any more and then they start going out into the countryside and rampaging across the countryside stealing from every house they can come to. This would, this would be a natural disa na uh, uh, national disaster. So what is the government uh, plans? Well, they're secret. But there is some leaks. Now, I'm going to be going to the spiritual side in a minute. I'm just giving you information you understand right now because you have to understand, Jesus said in Matthew 16, we know that you know how to tell times the weather when it's going to rain when it's not but you don't know the signs of the times the hypocrites so we're just talking about the signs of the times we're not here to look at to make predictions and prophetic predictions we're just saying let's look at what's happening around us because it helps us to measure the temperature and so and so uh, what, is, what are some of the leaks that have come out basically this there is there is a pastor in the United States, not an Adventist pastor, but he talks about rather direct, controversial things. He's a, an evangelical pastor, but you know what one of his subjects was recently? Which is the real true day of worship? Is it the first day or the seventh day? Hmm? That seems, and he's an evangelical pastor, but he's willing to deal with hard issues like that. Huh? And his conclusion, of course, his conclusion is the biblical Sabbath is the real day. Which makes you ask the question, why is he keeping Sunday? But that, that's, that's God's problem to solve. People are asking questions, right? Aren't people today looking for answers? Okay, one of the questions he decided to ask, he said, uh, because recently National Public Radio announced that the, the president had issued orders to all of the military forces, all of the armed forces have sealed orders of what they're going to do when the next crisis comes. Nobody knows what they are yet, but everybody knows, it's public knowledge, that the armed forces have their orders in hand to execute immediately the moment that they are told. The question is, what could those orders be? So this pastor started inquiring. He discovered something very interesting. Let me ask you what you would do. If you were a general or a colonel and you knew what was going to happen, would you let your family die or would you kind of prepare them? Is there a general or a colonel out there that would say, my loyalty is to the U.S. government, I will let my wife and children die? Is that what they would do? No. They wouldn't tell them everything, but they would tell them something, right? <laughs> That's exactly what happened. The wife of generals and colonels and military personnel from the Pentagon and the CIA all began hearing the same thing. And these wives discovered to their surprise that all the other wives had been told the same thing too. And so they came on and they were interviewed. No name, no faces. Just information. And this is basically the information I'm going to share with you. You can say, have you verified it? No. I just heard it from a military wife. I heard her being interviewed. Oh, in that case, you can throw it out. Yeah, you can throw it out. But you know what? When you're doing a war, do you think when, when a general is looking for military intelligence, do they throw out everything? Any scrap of information they can get about the enemy is important. And so... Any information you can get about what's going to happen is important for you. So I'm going to share it with you. Have I verified it? I don't know how to verify it. I just know that all the indicators are in place and the only thing that's lacking is the information. We don't know what's going to happen, but we know something is about to happen. This is the information. The wife said, once the crisis comes, either through a terrorist attack, which the government happens to know when and what, this is not secret information. Terrorist attack is not secret information, which makes you, of course, wonder, uh, how do you know? Well, and how much, how much of it are you involved in? But that's not the issue tonight. The main thing is, they know when and how they're going to do it. Or secondly, it could be the financial collapse. One of those two. What, what are the orders? The wife said, we have been told by our husbands that when that collapse happens, we have two hours to get out of the cities. Two hours. They are to have food in their cars and they are to immediately leave for the mountains or small isolated communities because all of the cities will be closed off. Nobody will be allowed to enter and nobody will be allowed to leave. They're just going to go in and pick up the bodies. A Seventh-day Adventist pastor friend of mine sent me a picture right next to his house near Atlanta. The government is storing 
I have the pictures on my computer. 500,000 casket liners. The whole field is filled. You know, casket liners are those big plastic boxes where they, where they put the casket and then they close the lid. It's kind of... So, the, so it doesn't get dirty. But they're all stacked up together. 500,000 of them. And he has pictures of him opening one up and getting it. You can put three bodies in each one. You get three bodies, close the lid. Three more bodies, close the lid. Three more bodies, close the lid. You can put a million and a half people in those things in a matter of a few hours if you have an army to do that. Now, I suspect Atlanta's not the only city that has a stack of those things. I can't imagine that only Atlanta has a plan to pick up the bodies. All the cities must have somewhere where they can pick up the bodies because you can't let all these cities just rush out and just tear up the countryside. So whoever's living in a city, and all of a sudden it began, something began to ring in my head. When you see these signs, Sister White said, of a, a national apostasy will be followed by national ruin. And when you see these signs, it's the same as Jerusalem of old. You must leave the cities, the big cities, preparatory to leaving the little cities. Now, I have no doubt that national ruin is coming very, very soon. You can say, David, we haven't heard this on the news. No, this is part of the problem Europe is complaining about. If you got my article, the, art the French people are saying, why isn't anybody in North America brave enough to warn their own people? This is the epicenter of this financial disaster is going to start in North America and those who are going to suffer the most will be the Americans. At least we want to warn the Frenchmen. At least we want people in our country to be ready. And in England, the head of the, the bank in England already got on national television and he's already warned the Englishmen to prepare for a great collapse and to, and to expect to severely lower their level, their lifestyle. So England is warning its people. France is beginning to warn its people. North America, silence. It's sad. You can see that if you, if you look, if anybody knows anything about economics, you can see the a, a fabric of North America tearing apart. First, the savings and loan put money to save them, and then you have, and then you have all these uh, banks failing because there's no more money. They've loaned the money to the housing industry. The housing industry has collapsed. People are just walking away from their homes and defaulting. So many have defaulted massively. There's not a single bank big enough in the United States that can handle the cash needs. So the government is printing more money to prop them up a little longer. It's happening right in front of our eyes. The fabric is tearing. If you, had a, if you, had, if you were in a parachute and you look up and you start seeing holes begin to appear, what are you going to think? My time is limited. You're seeing it tear? <laughs> Or you're carrying a bag full of groceries and all of a sudden one hole and another one. Something, something is it's getting weaker. Every tear it makes it weaker, weaker, more probable. And yet, um, none of us really are talking about it in North America. And, um, and yet, Europe is wiser than we are. They're at least talking about it. Uh, this is going to affect us radically. So now, let's start looking on the spiritual side. We have national ruin. Absolutely certain. You're, you're, you've followed my logic so far, right? The information. Now, you may not want to believe it. That's up to you. <laughs> I, I cannot help but believe it because I've been tracking it for 36 years. And I already knew it was coming. Uh, Larry Burkett, have you ever heard of Larry Burkett? Yeah. Uh, Christian Financial Concepts, a great Christian economist that helped people get out of debt. He died recently, but in his book, The, the Great Economic, The Coming Economic Earthquake, he said, the very last thing a government will do, the government will do, before the collapse, it will begin to print unlimited supplies of money to pay all its bills. That was the final indicator before the collapse, according to Larry Burkett. And he ha he's, of course, a very well-known economist surrounded by, by a large group of, of uh, professionals in the area. If national collapse has to come after after national ruin has to come after national apostasy. That's what the, the great controversy says. And I thought, but Lord, I can't believe this. The national collapse is going to happen before national apostasy. Did you have a question? Yes. 